So in Lamina test, we basically offer a pixel to pixel comparison of different screenshots that you want to compare. So you can compare a baseline image, which according to you is the ideal image of your website. And then you can take comparison images of different environments or different OS browser combination and then uh, compare them using our visual regression product. Now, we do support all the programming languages and the frameworks that Selenium does. So you can use any existing setup that you have and simply by few adding few steps, you can do visual regression test in your existing suits. So to start with, this is how our uh, visual regression dashboard would look like. So I'll break this demo in two parts. The part one would be the backend part from where I'll be running the test. And part two would be this UI where our automation test would be reflecting. Right, so to begin with, the first step would be to create a new project in our visual regression dashboard. So I'll click on new project. And then in here, I can define which product I want my test to show in. So I'll type visual UI demo. And then from the number of users in my account, I can select the approvers. So these approvers would have the authority to either approve a comparison or if they feel that the mismatch percent between the two screenshots is too much, they can mark it as a bug. So you can select up to five approvers from the account. And at the end of each visual regression test, they would get an email regarding the comparison and a reproducible link to the Lambda test dashboard. And finally, we also have this tags option. So depending on your requirement, you can select any particular date or any particular tag. So this would help you in segregation or filtering purpose of your visual regression project. So I'll click on create project and this would create an empty project on my dashboard. So it would look like something like this visual UI dot demo. And since we haven't run any test in product in this project right now, so it would show zero builds. Now uh, for the programming site, I have a basic setup in Java. So any programming language or framework, the integration of Lambda test would be a basically three step process. The step one would be the set of would be the Lambda test username and the access key. So in here, I have defined them in the environment variables. However, you can also pass them as a string directly as well. On the dashboard, you can click on this access key icon to fetch your Lambda test username and the access key. Now the second part would be the set of capabilities on which you want to run the test. So for this test, I have defined Windows 10 Chrome latest, but depending on your requirement, you can select a different configuration as well. On the Lambda test platform, you can go in the uh, Lambda test capability generator. So in here, we have all the latest OSs and browsers available. So depending on your requirement, you can select any configuration on the left side of the screen and the respect, respective code is generated on the right part of the screen. So you simply need to copy paste these script in your, in your code and the test would run on that particular configuration. And finally, uh, the third step of the integration would be to point the test towards Lambda test Selenium grid using this remote driver and beta smart UI dot hub. So these were the three steps you need to add in your script instead of your local driver to point, your, point the test towards Lambda test Selenium grid. Now, what makes this visual regression smart are some of these smart UI options that Lambda test gives. Now, these options are configurable from the code level and also from the UI level as well. So I'll briefly explain these smart UI options. So the first one is the error color. So whenever two screenshots are compared, the difference between those screenshots is highlighted. So using this RGB combination, red, green, and blue, you can decide that color. So let's say if the screenshots that are being compared are blue in color, then it would make more sense if the difference is highlighted in a green or a red color. Then uh, the next one would be transparency. So transparency value ranges from zero to one. So if you set the transparency to zero, it would only show the difference between the screenshots. And if you set it to one, then it would show the difference along with both the images in the background. So it would be like an overlapped image with the baseline image, the comparison image and the resultant image. 
Now next is this large image threshold. So this is the sensitivity of the comparison. So more is this value, more is the accurate comparison between the screenshots. And the value ranges from 100 to 1200. So if you set the value to 1200, it is the most accurate comparison that can happen between the images. And then we offer this uh, capability called box. So using this uh, box, we can put some custom pixel values and that would create a box structure in our screenshot. And then if you put that box in the bounding box capability, that particular box would be compared between the two screenshots. And if you set it in the ignored box capability, that particular screenshot, that particular uh, box would be ignored while calculating the mismatch percent. So as a use case, let's say there is a banner that uh, you want to ignore in the comparison. So you can create that box using this pixel value and then pass it in the ignored box capability and that particular banner would be ignored while calculating the mismatch person. Now next, let's say the comparison image is of a different sized one than the baseline. So in that case, you can put this scale to same size as two. So it would automatically change it to the same size as the baseline image and then starts doing the comparison for more accurate results. So these were some of the smart UI options. Now for this demo, what I'm doing is, uh, first of all, uh, I'm opening this Lambda test. Uh, I'm using this driver.get.amazon.in. So I'm opening Amazon website and then I'm using this web hook to capture the screenshot of the home page, right? And also to make sure that all my projects are going to the new project that I created. So I have mentioned the project name here, visual UI dot demo, which we created initially. Now I'll, I'll run the first test. Okay, right, so by default, the first test in any uh, particular project is considered as the baseline image, right? And since it is the baseline, it would be automatically approved because it has nothing to compare it with as of yet. Now, the next thing what I'll do is, while this is being captured, the next thing that I'll do is, in the code, I'm after opening the lamp, after opening the Amazon website, I'm putting a sleep of five seconds. So it would open the website, then wait for five seconds and then capture the screenshot. So basically Amazon website has few banners that keep on moving. So after five seconds, there would be a different banner on the screen. Hence the screenshot would look, look different, right? So let's say if the previous test was completed. Yes, it was. So that screenshot is approved since it was the baseline. Now I'll run the same test script again with a five second sleep. Okay, so we have the second screenshot already here and it would take a moment, approximately five more seconds to capture the screenshot of this second page. And once it is here, it would start doing pixel to pixel comparison between the images. And if there is a slight uh, font change or pixel color change between the screenshots, it would be highlighted using the error color that we have defined in our script. Right, so it says uh, it is captured and it says one change is found. I'll open the second build. Now on the left side, what we have is the baseline image. On the center, we have the comparison image and on the right most, we have the resultant image, right? So the banner that you see in the background that moved in the comparison image, which shows this major, major changes in the screenshots. Now I'll click on this horizontal mode to see the difference in more details. And also I can click on this difference mode. So this would allow me to use this toggle button to see both the baseline and comparison in, in real time and spot the actual differences. Right. Along with that, in the, in the vertical mode, you will also see the mismatch percent of the screenshots. So as a, as a tester, if you feel that point two. 0.28.25 is considerable or approvable. So you can click on this approve button and that, that would approve the comparison image. But if you feel that point uh, that 28.25 is too much, in that case, you can click on this report bug icon 
and it would call the API of whatever bug tracking tool you have integrated with. So my account is integrated with Jira. So I can directly push the resultant image from here itself instead of separately going to Jira to create the bug. Right, along with that, uh, we offer some additional settings as well. So as I mentioned in the code, the smart UI options that we were controlling from the code level, so that can also be configured from the UI level as well. Right, so all the changes, I mean, if you want to add approvers later in your project, or if you want to change the sensitivity of comparison or change the error highlight color, right, so you can do it from the project settings. Along with that, one of the new features that we have introduced is the custom mismatch percent. So let's say I set the mismatch percent to 14. So any comparison in which the mismatch percent is less than 14, those images will be automatically approved. And if it is more than 14.6, then only you will get the option to uh, either approve it or mark it as a bug. So let's say comparing, you are comparing 100 to 200 images at a time. So this feature would be quite handy in those scenarios. Now, the first, as I mentioned, the first uh, build in any project is considered as the baseline image, right? However, the users also have the option to make a later build as the baseline. So if I click on this make a baseline option, the second build would be considered as the baseline now. So going further, any next build would be compared to this one instead of the first one. And also this, this is also configurable from the code level as well. So in the code, you can pass this capability, smart UI dot baseline. So it would make any new build as the baseline build and then compare the next consecutive builds with the with this one instead of the first one. So uh, this was the visual regression project. So if you guys have uh, any questions, feel free to email us at support at the rate lambda test.com and we'll be more than happy to help. Along with that, we also have documentation available here on the, on the Lambda test dashboard. So you can simply uh, add the steps like adding the beta hub and the Lambda test username and access key and use your existing Selenium projects to run the test on the visual degradation dashboard, right? Also, uh, if you want to capture the full page screenshot, so for that, we also have the capability called uh, smartui.fullpage-take-screenshot. So that would capture the screenshot of the full page instead of just the viewports. Along with that, we also have support for Cypress in visual degradation. So if you are using Cypress, then also you can uh, do your visual degradation test on the Lambda test platform. 